Tonight, from Mount Isa, Monday Conference debates homosexual rights and wrongs. Welcome again to Monday Conference. Mount Isa has uh, 30 odd thousand people, 5,000 of them working in the mine, hundreds of thousands of tons of copper, lead, and zinc concentrate per year, the best stakes in the country, and one of the most striking civic centres, and that's where we are now. Mount Isa is near enough to 1,600 kilometres as the Boeing 727 flies from Brisbane, and it's 1,300 kilometres to Darwin on the other side. It's hot, dry and hospitable. It's also perhaps the most suspicious place Monday Conference has ever visited. <laughs> why, why Mount Isa, we keep on being asked. Why not, is our apparently unconvincing reply. Well, whether it's Mount Isa's natural caution, modesty or cynicism, we seem to have a problem that may have something to do with the topic of this Monday Conference. Well, for the record, we're in Mount Isa because we want to be here and because we should get to places like this from time to time. Well, one common and understandable complaint which we receive from viewers of Monday Conference in the remoter centres, such as Mount Isa, is that they're effectively denied the chance to participate in Monday Conference debates. They live too far from where we produce most editions, the capital cities. Well, that's not true today. We're here. Another criticism, uh, not so justifiable, is that when we do move out, we tend to deal with local issues. Well, that's not true today. We're debating a national, not to say universal issue. No hint of parochialism about this one. Well, so much for the commercial, now down to business. What uh, disadvantages under the law do homosexuals suffer in Australia? In what ways is there discrimination against them socially, in terms of employment, and in terms of security of life and limb? And what about homosexuality itself? Is it a valid alternative sexuality, or is it something less, an aberration? Well, one would uh, have to have been asleep for a long time not to have noticed that these issues are being discussed more often and more frankly in more places in recent times. And one person who's added much to this increasing public discussion is Lex Watson. Mr. Watson is a prolific writer on homosexual issues. He's been an activist in the gay liberation movement since 1970 and represents uh, Gay Lib on the Homosexual Rights Coalition. Lex Watson is Principal Tutor in Government in the University of Sydney. Well, Mr. Watson, uh, can we deal first with the, the disadvantages under the law? Briefly, uh, what laws or what uh, legal regulations or whatever we call them would you like to see uh, abolished here and now? Well, the law is... Um, there are several laws which, which cover homosexual behaviour. Mm -hmm. Uh, the most serious one is the law against buggery, which exists in all states except now South Australia. And it carries a penalty, a maximum penalty, ranging from 14 years in New South Wales to life imprisonment in the ACT. I think it's... And that's the most serious offence, but there's a series of other lesser crimes, in, and what it amounts to is that all male homosexual sexual activity uh, is illegal, and most of it carries very serious penalties, ranging from two years up, and all attempts to get anyone else to commit a, a, a homosexual act with you is also illegal. Do you, uh, do you accept the adage that the state has no business in the bedrooms of the nation? Oh, well, obviously. Yes. Um, I, I mean, when we're talking about the law, I think it, what's important to say is that in a curious sense, the law is not very important. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are prosecuted in Australia, um, running into the hundreds per year, but that's a very, very small percentage. And it's a silly situation in a sense, because I mean, I'm sitting here, I'm saying I'm a homosexual. Now that means that I break the law. Uh, I commit crimes which are very serious crimes under the law, and I don't expect someone to rush in after the program, grab me and, and put me in a court, because they just don't do that. Uh, a few people are picked off, but basically very few are. And if you committed, um, let's take Queensland, which is having a raid on dope smoking. Now, if I was sat here and said, well, look, I'm a dope smoker, um, I expect that they'd probably come and try and hassle me after the program and book me. Uh, but with homosexual activity, obviously they don't. So it's, it's a curious situation where the law is important symbolically. Um, it frightens a lot of people because they don't know about the enforcement situation. Uh, symbolically, we find it thoroughly offensive. Changing it is not going to make that much difference in practice. Well, what about, uh, I suppose, on the other side of the coin, are there 
is there anything that the state should be doing, or the law should be doing, to remove, uh, I suppose, social discrimination? Is there anything positive that the law should be doing? Well, there's a lot of things that the state could do um, and should do, because I think that the state's never accepted that homosexuals are a discriminated, um, oppressed minority group. And I don't think that the state, worse than that, has ever accepted that it plays a major role in doing that. And it's not just the law, it's employment, for instance. Um, it's a refusal to accept that homosexual behaviour and homosexual activity should be talked about. It's banning discussion of homosexual matters um, through a whole range of areas where the state has um, control. School curricula. Uh, in New South Wales, the Health Commission banned, um, pulped an edition of their, pro of their um, journal because it had an article on homosexuality that didn't also say, this is bad. It was talking about the problem of VD. Uh, there's a range of things right through here where the government um, censors books. The Queensland government censored a film because it treated homosexuality as being you know, part of life rather than saying that it was a bad thing. And so Queensland banned the film called A, Na a Very Natural Thing. And there's a whole range of issues right through here where the state hasn't accepted its role. It hasn't accepted its role to ban employment discrimination in the way in which states are starting to do with, say, racial discrimination, discrimination against women. And we think that the state, in fact, has a role to look at the areas of discrimination and look at what they can do to outlaw it. And we're a long way from that situation. Good, thank you. Now, anyone, yes? Yeah. Do you think there should be laws to protect our children from homosexual influences? Homosexual influence. Influences. Influences. Right. No, um, obviously not. I think that there ought to be laws which protect anyone from uh, sexual exploitation in the sense of having pressure put on them to engage in any sort of sexual activity in which they're not willing um, to be involved or not interested in being involved. But I think that the state has an obligation, frankly, to make sure that information about homosexuality is given to children just as information about heterosexuality is given to children at a very early age, because the consequences of not doing so are very serious. Do you want to come back? By, if you want to, by all means, please, anyone, when you've got more than one question. If you... So you think it's a, a natural thing, homosexuality, and if a child's going to be a homosexual, it's going to happen anyway? Oh, clearly, if, if people, people's sexual orientation is not going to be affected by information that's given to them. What will be affected is the, is the extent to which they can cope with their own sexuality and the extent to which they can cope with other people's sexuality and not get aggressive about it, um, which I think one of the questions is about to do. Well, we'll see. We'll just, we'll see, yes? We'll just, what... Yes, why do why you cover yourself up with this gay lib business? And the second thing is, why don't you call yourself a straight-out poofter and pervert? And why are perverts allowed to run the street and rape and murder and kill little babies like you? Ah, ah, ah. Um, the, the, the boot is on the other foot, my friend. Um, I'm quite happy to call myself a poofter. I don't regard the term as offensive. I dislike the term pervert intensely. When you talk about raping and murdering, rape is a heterosexual crime in our community. I know of one... And one only case of homosexual rape outside prisons where homosexual rape is a practice, practiced by heterosexuals in the jail on the homosexuals. But apart from that, there is one and one only case that I know of homosexual rape in this community. Now, you talk about murder. In Australia last year, there were five men murdered because their assailants believed them to be homosexual. No other reason. There's been at least two so far in Australia this year. We don't go around murdering kids. We don't go around murdering heterosexuals. But the reverse is done to us. And that's, the, that's a, a thing for which you've got to feel responsibility. It's not our responsibility. Someone on the side, uh, yes. It surprises me that a tutor in government should su suggest that the law has no place in the bedroom. Does he propose that Australia should be made up of several million bedroom republics something after the style of, of the Hutt Republic in Western Australia. <laughs> I wouldn't propose that anything be after the style of the Hutt Republic, but I see no reason why people shouldn't have the right of freedom, which after all is a fundamental premise of our country, is a freedom of choice and a freedom of action. Yes, the woman with the sunglasses and... Yes. 
Do you consider acts between homosexuals to be natural? And if you do, on what criteria do you pay, base your assumption? I think that the question again could be turned around, but the answer is obviously I consider them to be natural. Um, they're natural because they're part of creation. Um, animals. Homosexual behaviour is widespread amongst animals. It is widespread among people. It has been in existence in virtually every known culture at every point in time in our society. It's uh, the view of psychiatrists in Australia is that homosexual behaviour is a natural occurrence. Um, to many of them, uh, it's a natural occurrence like left-handedness. We're different, but that difference is in that sense and no other. Do you want to have your say so we can hear it, or would you rather keep it yourself? No? All right. A bit of bravery doesn't go amiss. Yes, up there. The killings in Houston, Texas, in two, two years ago, what would you base those murders on? Sorry? The killings in Houston, Texas last year, where uh, about 16 young guys got killed through homosexual activities? Oh yes, I can, I, can, um, I can give you endless instances of precisely the same thing in the heterosexual situation. I don't defend that behaviour for one minute. Some of them, of course, were heterosexual as well. He murdered women no. as well as men. Yeah, I know, but what I meant to say was, what would you base those killings down to? Oh, look, the guy, the guy was obviously very sick psychiatrically, but that's quite, dis quite distinguishable from anything to do with his sexual orientation as such. He was homosexual, he also happened to be a sexual psychopath. The same occurs in heterosexuals. Accepting uh, the view that uh, homosexuality is a, an alternate, equally valid form of sexuality uh, to heterosexuality, what does this mean in terms of teachers working in schools? What, how should this be conveyed? At what age? How? You know, if you want to change social attitudes, how do you go, how do you go about it? Uh, you um, you reorganise the school curricula and you also... I mean, one thing clearly is that the whole of not only school curricula, but the whole virtually of the media, with very limited exceptions on television and they're fairly recent, the whole of advertising is heterosexual in orientation. Uh, you see a bloke and a, and, a, and a woman running up a beach holding hands. You don't see two men doing it, you don't see two women doing it. Um, and I think that we're going to have to come to the point where this does start coming through, um, right through the curricula and everything else, so that people know that there are alternatives, which are decisions that they're going to have to face about themselves at some stage. Uh, but as far as school teachers are concerned, it's a very critical thing, because uh, the, a number of cases where school teachers have been sacked simply because they decided to let their sexual orientation be known. And at the moment in Queensland, in the Kelvin Grove uh, College of Advanced Education, they formed a homosexual group on the campus. And the college has said, this group cannot exist on our campus. And it's banned. And they tried to ban it. They've tried to refuse it um, use of rooms. They've tried to refuse it to use um, letter boxes. They've said it can't use the name of the college in any um, advertising it did. On two grounds, so far as I know, one of which is that the, the people involved with the group may be committing criminal acts which goes back to the thing about the law, and secondly, that they can't allow any group on the campus that goes against social mores, which is an extraordinary attitude to education, that you use education as a form of censorship, um, that you use the education system and teachers to ban information and to refuse to allow it to be propagated. It's a very dangerous thing, but unfortunately it's happening. It's not the first time. I'd like to disagree with you in that uh, you said the curricula should be uh, reorganised well, I feel that, um, that all sexual education, I am a school teacher, yep. um, is too important an issue to be made into a subject as such. But I feel that, that uh, children should be educated on, a, on an honest basis. When the child requires the education, I feel the relationship should be good enough that, that the teacher can uh, communicate the information without bias and without values to that child. But uh, making it a subject, I think, would be very um, touchy ground and it would uh, relegate it to the irrelevance of some of these uh, other sort of broad, wishy-washy subjects. How, how would you feel about that? Yeah, look, I think I agree with you entirely. I mean, when I say the curricula ought to be reassessed, I'm talking not simply about sex education or personal development type courses, but about English courses, history courses, uh, social science courses, courses in civics and so on right through the curricula 
there is a solid uh, heterosexual bias. And there are schools in, in Australia, um, particularly in Queensland, and I don't particularly want to start Queensland bashing, but particularly in Queensland where books, uh, literature for instance, which deals with homosexual questions, is banned. You can't use them uh, because people don't want their kids to know about it. Uh, and it's in those areas where I think it's most important because it's part of a total social spectrum. And I agree entirely, shouldn't be isolated out into a little box somewhere over there saying sex is here and the rest of the world is over here. No, well, I, I, I didn't have that in mind either. If, if you thought I did, I don't know whether you did. Uh, but, but having said that, would you be inclined to feel that any discussion of homosexuality, not, not way in a little corner of its own as a ghetto subject, whatever, but however it was done, would be best done by homosexuals? Uh, actually, yes. Um, we're always accused of bias, you see, when we talk about homosexuality, we're biased. I think, oddly enough, that the heterosexuals are biased and that we're, in a sense, unbiased. Uh, for, well, it, it sounds bizarre, but I think it's quite defensible. We grew up in a heterosexual community. We know a fair bit about heterosexuality. We can't avoid that. Whereas heterosexuals, by and large, know nothing about the homosexual situation. Now, I think, at least in our present society, anybody who said homosexuality was a really good thing and it's really beaut to be homosexual is a bit mad because it's got lots of very unpleasant aspects because of the society in which we live. But in the present situation, I think we're more um, even-handed, as, as a generalisation, I'm not defending everyone, uh, about both sides of the sexual spectrum than the heterosexuals are. And so if, if you wanted to, say, ban one or other group on the grounds of bias from these sorts of courses, I think the heterosexuals should go out. <laughs> Was there someone down? Yes. Uh, I come from Townsville, sorry. <laughs> I come from Townsville and just before the cyclone in Darwin, uh, God spoke to me about uh, it was coming to happen and the first the first thing that was you come because of Townsville. Townsville. Townsville, sorry. And I was uh, uh, desperate because I couldn't get on something like Monday Conference, but all I could do was preach for the public address to the people of Townsville that God was going to have to do that because particularly of uh, homosexuality, uh, sexual sins, and secondly because of uh, dropouts and druggies, but it, it comes back to the... You talk about schools and education. The basic uh, uh, nutshell group is the family, and God made man and woman to go together, and he told them to teach their children to fear the Lord and to be brought up in his admonition. Most of the trouble in this country is because parents today, generally, don't know God, and their kids, I'm preaching them here in Mount Isa, right, well, laugh. Would you, would you let Lex Watson uh, comment on that, please? You, but you, you, we won in three days. In a nutshell. Well, that cyclone came. What? Uh, would you mind making... Would... Uh, uh, please, now, please. please. Uh, look. look, in answer to your question, um, the Emperor Justinian believed that homosexual behaviour caused earthquakes. Uh, you believe that it causes cyclones. And I'm afraid I have to suggest to you that it's superstitious nonsense and that it's not worth replying no, to. You've had your chance. Thank you. No, no one. Yes, over here then. Good. I was interested in your comment about rape. Uh, most people feel more fear of homosexual rape for their sons than, um, than most other aspects of homosexuality. But in the event that women who are raped are very loath to report such things to the police, wouldn't it be much more likely that boys would feel the same way? In fact, even more so than a woman would? Um, no, I think not. I mean, I, I think your question is, is a very valid one, but I think not, because I think that the, that the, the, the situation with heterosexual rape is a very complex one, but a lot of people will turn around and say to the woman, oh, look, you know, you probably consented and you're just complaining. And there's that sort of emphasis on not reporting it. Whereas in the homosexual situation, I think anyone who is vaguely involved in a potential situation like that is far more likely to scream and be taken seriously. And they're not going to put you in the dock and say, look, you're really a poofter anyhow. Uh, you probably gave in and you're just complaining about it and start questioning you about your pre-sexual um, pre history in the way in which women are treated under the present rape laws. And I think that the, the net result of the thing is that people are very likely to complain if there's any suggestion about homosexual rape outside the prison situation, which is a very, very special situation. But otherwise, 
um, I think it's highly unlikely to, uh, that people are, are, people are highly unlikely to complain. Um, highly likely to complain. I'm getting myself thoroughly confused here. Highly likely to complain about homosexual rape. Um, relatively unlikely to complain about the heterosexual thing. I'm finding it hard to see the hands. Would you please put them up big and strong? Yeah. All right, yes. No, no, don't come any closer. What I've been trying to point out all along, just because I've got a fancy hat on and I've got a shirt on, do everybody think I'm a poof? Now, that's all I've come here to, you know. We needed to know that, thanks. For all that. right. <laughs> no, but but, a, but a, a, a hat and a shirt doesn't make a poof. Maybe you should lend me your hat. <laughs> um, in the blue, yes. Why are there more homosexuals now than 20 years ago? Well, there clearly aren't. Um, the, what is the situation now is that we're prepared to talk about it because we're no longer prepared to stay silent and suffer the sorts of things that we've suffered in the past. And because social attitudes have changed sufficiently to allow us to do that, or some of us to do it, by no means all. But the incidence of homosexual behaviour hasn't changed one iota. Yes, so, woman, that's right. I've got uh, two uh, curious children. They're always asking me questions, and I try and uh, answer them as honest as possible as I can. Now, what happens when they turn around and they're going to say, now, Mum, what's a homosexual? What and how am I going to answer them? Because well, I want to answer them as, as honest as I can, yes, without well, turning them into a homosexual, if you understand what I mean. <laughs> I... Um I think the answer is really quite simple. I mean, it depends on what age the kids are as to what sort of detail you want to go into, but the answer really is quite simple. Homosexuals are people whose sexual attraction is for members of the same sex, and heterosexuals are people whose attraction is for the opposite sex. It's just that simple. Nothing more nor less. Yes, in the blue. I have a few questions, actually, I'd like to put forward here. Firstly, do you consider yourself as a normal member of society? Yes. And by what yardstick do you measure yourself? <laughs> Look, there, I don't believe that there is such a thing as a norm in society anyhow. I think that there is a vast range of people on a whole series of areas. Um, people have a vast range of choice about the sport that they're interested in or they're not interested in sport, they're interested in other um, pastimes, hobbies and whatever. Um, that, there's one sort of diversity there which people accept. But in the sexual area, for some curious reason, people don't accept diversity. People feel very threatened that there are some people who are sexually different from heterosexuals. And it's, it's just that simple. That it, the, the notion of a norm is a dangerous notion in this context. Go ahead. This uh, country in which we live, which is basically a Christian society. Now, the law of the lands are based upon the commandments of God. So, don't you think that the commandments of God, or the Bible in this case, uh, instance, has some relevance to this subject? Um, frankly, no. Um, and the reason why, the reason why... Um, on, on that, yes, thanks, Bob. On that note, um, one would say one thing quite simply, which is, which is that if anyone doubts that homosexuals have problems in our society before this program, um, they shouldn't doubt it after that. Yeah. Well. But going going back to the question, um, we live in a society in which the bulk of people profess to be Christian in some sense. Now, that's fine, that's their, pro that's their prerogative and okay. But what we do not do is live in a society in which Christianity is compulsory or in which a particular form of Christianity is compulsory. What we do is live in a society where the church and the state are separate and where some people presume to say that because they believe something which is Christian in their view, and I suggest to you that there is a vast range of opinion about what Christian attitude is and what Christian attitude on sexuality is, 
Um, but even outside that, we live in a society in which it is not compulsory to be Christian. And people have a right to be non-Christian, they have a right to be Jewish, Muslim, atheist, agnostic, whatever, and to adopt their own moral values and have the right to go about their life free from a compulsory um, and legally enforced form of compulsory sexual behaviour and morality. And I, I don't accept your right to enforce one on me. Could I, could I ask you, just follow that up, what would you think of somebody who was both a Christian and a homosexual? Well, firstly, they can't be either. They can't be one or the other. They have to be one or the other, put it that Big way. Pardon? They cannot be a Christian and a homosexual. Right. Um, I'd just like to add to that point, uh, the uh, Bible bashes around here. Uh, commandment number nine is uh, coveting thy neighbour's wife. And uh, I, don't, I can't remember any commandments about homosexuality. So uh, why don't they sort their own houses out first? The, Either illegalise that first, eh, perhaps? There are bits of the Bible that do refer to homosexuality, and I have no wish to... We're talking about homosexuality. Well, so does the Bible. And uh, in Leviticus 20.13, uh, the Bible says that homosexuals should be stoned to death. And unfortunately, some people do tend to take their Bibles rather literally, and I think they've got a bit of a problem. Would our, would our friend over here uh, come around so we can see him? You know, there's nothing worse than the disguised interjecting. Would you like to come and sit down so we can see you and hear you? Well, as long as we know where you are. Uh, yes? We were always taught in our psychology lectures that uh, homosexuality is due to a detrimental psychological effect during the sexual phase of development. Yeah, well, I think your, your psychology lecturer should update himself. The um, ANZ uh, College of Psychiatrists did a survey of the attitudes of Australian and New Zealand psychiatrists to the question of homosexuality in 1973. And the overwhelming bulk of those psychiatrists voted in favour of one or other of two propositions, either that homosexual behaviour was a normal personality variant like left-handedness, or that homosexual behaviour and a homosexual orientation was in no way incompatible with normal mental uh, health and development. And that the, the present situation, as far as the psychiatrist is concerned, is that they simply don't regard it as an illness, a sickness, or in fact any malfunction at all. Yes, at the back. Yes, an updated psychologist and just uh, uh, make the point that the same sort of rigid and condemnatory attitudes towards homosexuality, of which we have just seen a shocking example, are also the attitudes which inflict repression and uh, violence upon many other aspects of sexuality generally. And uh, the, they have ripped off women for years, they, these attitudes are the same attitudes that still prevent reasonable sex education being carried out in any community. Quite true. I would like to ask Mr. Watson if he's uh, in favour or against creation. Creation of what sort? Now, how did you intend to create a family? I don't intend to create a family at all, my friend. We all gonna be disappeared. Why you think? <laughs> I don't think I'll comment on that. There, look, it's absolutely absurd to suggest that because some people are homosexual, that everyone's going to become homosexual and the population's going to die out. You here to destroy? My friend, you can go on breeding until you're blue in the face. I don't want to stop it. Right, right at the back, yes. Um, I think the majority of people would be interested in, in obtaining more information that you have rather than listen to a lot of query questions. Uh, I would like to know three things. One, what percentage of homosexual activity is over the wide span of A, the age group of 1 to 15, uh, 15 to 35 and upwards. Do these figures vary? And also, do you agree that segregation of the sexes can lead to a more homosexual activity? Uh, to take the last one first, the answer is probably yes, um, in the same sense in which in very repressive societies, which Australia has long been, 
uh, there's been a lot of enforced heterosexual behaviour which has been equally unpleasant and unsuccessful for the people involved. And the question of the incidence of homosexual behaviour, there's no figures that really will tell you as far as age group is concerned. But what I can tell you is that uh, based on Kinsey's figures, uh, something like 37% of the male population, according to Kinsey, experienced homosexual sex to the point of orgasm between the ages of 16 and 55, and that something in the order of 15% of the population, both male and female, are predominantly or exclusively homosexual for the better part of their adult life. 15%. I'd like to know whether you think homosexuals are born or made? Uh, neither I nor anyone else knows what causes heterosexuality, I think is probably the answer to your question. Um, no, same, it's, the, it's the same thing. That you, you're simply faced with a situation that there are people who are homosexual, there are people who are heterosexual, there are people who are bisexual. There always have been, there always will be. Since my little boy was born, I have been given good advice on how not to turn him out of pufta. Now, could you tell me if there is anything in pink dye that changes hormones in children? Because that is, I've been told not to put pink on him or he'll end up a pufta. I, I think that you're probably right. It's a very worrying problem, isn't it? Um, I'm glad to see you've got one of your little boys in blue and one in pink. It's... Oh! <laughs> Borrow it. No, pink, that's a novel one. Uh, lead poisoning is, uh, is one theory that was around, but I hadn't heard pink die before. Yes. Mate, why are you a puff? One? Why are you a puff? Oh, God. These intellectuals, they follow us everywhere. Um, <laughs> Explain why homosexuals should be parents. Explain why homosexuals should be parents. Why they should be parents? Well, I don't know that I have suggested that they should be. I don't think that there's any reason why they shouldn't be either. I think that if you are homosexual and you get yourself into a heterosexual relationship or you're predominantly homosexual, then the relationship is likely to be fairly tense and that can be difficult for the child. Now, I'm not necessarily suggesting that, that's, that the traditional nuclear couple is the only way to bring up a child. Um, but I think anyone who buys into the question of being a parent has got to be, take it very seriously as to whether uh, whatever solution they come to is a solution that they can adequately cope with to bring up the kids. But um, I don't see why people can't be parents. I can't see why homosexual couples can't adopt or foster kids if they want to and if taken as people quite independently of their sexual orientation they are suitable people to do so. On that point, anyone on that point to follow it up? I've witnessed a homosexual wedding. It was between two male homosexuals. So this was illegal, of course, and, uh, and I often wondered, could, could these people, if it were ever made legal, be allowed to adopt children? And if so, uh, would they, would they uh, honestly give the child a fair go and bring them up in a heterosexual or a homosexual uh, environment? Look, um, the way in which people are brought up seems to have singularly little impact on people's sexual orientation at the end of it. The population is full of homosexuals who are brought up in a heterosexual relationship. And I can see no reason why uh, anyone brought up in a homosexual relationship is any more likely to turn out homosexual. No, none at all. Uh, I'd like to know, how can you um, get convicted of being a homosexual? You know, do you have to get um, caught in the act or, you know? <laughs> do you, or is there any other way? Um, I'll tell you about a case which occurred in Victoria in 1975 of two men who were in their late twenties who lived together and had been doing so for some time. And a acquaintance, I won't call him a friend of theirs, uh, was jealous of the relationship for some reason and reported it to the local police who visited the flat uh, late in the evening, asked them whether they were homosexual, they said yes, asked them whether they were sleeping together, they said yes, took them down to the police station, questioned them separately, got them to sign statements admitting that they performed certain acts. Um, and on the basis of that information alone, they were charged uh, with serious offences. They were bailed out, as is the habit, and turned up in court um, some weeks later to face trial. And when they turned up again, 
the judge concerned said, oh, well, you're obviously guilty, and they said, yeah, because there was no point in denying it. He said, you still live at the same address? And they said, yep. And he thought, aha, they've done it again. <laughs> and so he gave them a choice. He said, you can either go to jail because you're recidivists, repeated offenders, or you can be deported to South Australia. <laughs> on the grounds that it was then legal in South Australia, and two blokes were deported from Melbourne to South Australia in May 1975 for being homosexual. Is there, a, is there anyone I hope that applause is not for the action of the courts. So, is there anyone leaning over the wall who'd like to say something? I think we probably can cope with you there, if you'd like to. If, don't feel, well, don't feel cut out, will you? Put your hand up if you want to say, yes. Well, uh, Sorry. I find that, uh, not, in, not in Mount Isa, but coming from the city, that uh, working a lot of night spots there, that uh, homosexuals have trouble finding partners. And when they do, they turn to uh, young boys, 16, 17, 18. And I've seen this frequently in nightclubs and places where man, middle-aged, 35, 40, is trying to pick up, seduce, whatever you call, call it what you like, a young boy, 16 or 17. And this, I would never call you a poof. I'd, if you're a homosexual, that's your bag, and I would never call you a poof. But I disagree with uh, men in the middle age trying to pick up school boys, boys of 17, 18. And you only have to look in Sydney now. All the young boys that are prostituting themselves are 20, 21, 18, 19. And how, how come that they're like this? How come yeah, I'm not. I'm not against homosexual. If you're a homosexual, that's great. You, you keep it to yourself. But why? Why have they got to go for the young boys, 16 and 17? And do you agree that uh, homosexuals have trouble finding partners? Um, I think I get very worried. I must say about bosses in offices chasing the young secretaries around the office. <laughs> it's it's precisely the same situation. It doesn't quite fit in with my definition of normality. Uh, it's precisely the same. I don't know that there is that much prostitution, male prostitution in Sydney, but the same age thing applies to female prostitution. Excuse me, you come from Sydney? Yes. Have you walked down Darlinghurst Road lately? Yes. Well, I tell you what, you must have had your eyes closed. <laughs> I don't think so. I have a fair idea about what goes on in Sydney. Well. I'm not denying that there is, there is male prostitution exists. I'm not denying that there's female prostitution exists. And, and the situation is roughly comparable. But you're talking about two quite different things. If, if, a, if a bloke, whatever his age, goes out to sell himself for sex, or a woman, that's one thing. That's a decision on their part to put themselves in a position. You're talking about a totally different thing, on the other hand, where someone else is going out to try and seduce that person who may or may not be willing. How do you think that these young boys that are prostituting themselves are not, how do you think they turned homosexual? Where do you think it all started? I think we've gone through the problem, the question of why people are homosexual. They aren't homosexual because they were seduced. I disagree. Well, look, my friend, I certainly was a homosexual a long time before I ever got to do anything about it. I sometimes regret that somebody didn't seduce me at a much <laughs> earlier age. You've broken the drought earlier. Um, but it's certainly neither in my case nor in the case of almost anyone I know was, was there any conceivable way in which you can argue that they became homosexual because someone seduced them because it's simply not the case. Every one of them knew they were homosexual and then had to try and find out what to do about it. That's the problem. It's not old men running around chasing little boys. Well, I've, I've, one last one. I've right. seen, I've seen in wine bars, in uh, discos, children still, I want to say children 16, still in school uniform still in school uniform, and you can see these men, 35, 40, hanging off the side of them. Now tell me whether they know whether they're homosexual at that I th age. I think we'd better swap addresses after this. I don't know about these bars at all. <laughs> now, my friend, if, yes, yes. Would you mind standing? Thanks. I disagree with you. I think you'll find that homosexuality is a problem of environment. Um, the normal is not for boys to grow up to be homosexuals, and I think that you'll find, you said that uh, you felt homosexuals are being discriminated against and particularly in Queensland I suggest to you that this could be because we have um, a Christian Premier. Now don't hell, hell me down before I get started here. You, you might think I'm a Bible banger but I might be a Bible banger with a difference. Let me suggest this that 
Uh, during World War II, most of our pilots and uh, aviators were young men, about 21, 22 years of age, who had uh, manly standards and probably godly standards. And in those days, um, in Mackay, we used to have United uh, prayer meetings uh, when we'd see where General MacArthur was with the Japs. And I think you'll find that when a society has the right to raise its voice against things that it disapproves, which it feels are a threat to the society, like murder, theft, other things, we want our wives to be safe walking down the street, um, these things, homosexuality or perverseness as it's called in the scripture was one of the reasons God judged Sodom and Gomorrah. Jesus referred to this when he said about Capernaum look, look, I, don't, I don't want to be yes, rude but we, right, have, right. we have been through this haven't we? Yeah, I'm just you know, saying, really alright I'm saying this that the reason as, as a Christian nation and, the, and probably if you say there is a bias it is because yeah, uh, the bulk of the people there, can, yeah. have called upon Look, you can believe what you like about, about what causes homosexual behaviour. Um, all I say to you, and I say it quite seriously because I've read the literature, I know it. There is no study that has ever been done that is in any way conclusive about what causes homosexual behaviour. Now, you can believe that it's caused by environment in some way. My friend over there may believe it's caused by seduction. But not a single survey that's ever been done gives any credence to any of the theories. You know, there's, there's well, dozens of theories and not one of them is convincing. Well, you're saying that, but you're saying that, but whether or not that is the truth is another matter. And also it depends who does the surveys and whether or not the people whose surveys really are the truth get printed the same I as agree with you entirely. Today I might get held down. No, but I, I said that I think you the don't, reason you have no evidence yourself to make the statement that you did that in any way is convincing. And I suggest to you that if you have, I'd love to see it because I have read the stuff. I have read all of it, I think. And it's lousy. It is unconvincing. It well, proves nothing. I have access to material which I could conclusively prove to you what I have said, having been a former public servant and under a bond of oath of confidence I'm not allowed to break. But well, I can show you I'm studies not where the environment like definitely affects the child. And that is the I reason that school convinced. teachers are distressed about the fact that university lecturers then have the opportunity to create an environment or some kind of an influence upon those children whom they don't wish to be educated I am that way. totally unconvinced by statements that say that I know of material which I can't produce but I know it's there. I don't believe, and I'm pretty bloody sure, that if any public service in this country had done a survey on the causation of homosexual behaviour, that it would have been made public and would be accessible. Ah. If, you think, if you think, in all seriousness, that the public service is, is sympathetic to our cause and unsympathetic to yours, then I think you're kidding yourself. Right, that's the fact. What I think is, why don't people just leave people alone? Um, all these Christians go around saying live and let live, but everybody's going around insulting poofters and so on. Nobody's allowed to just just do what they want to do and live. They always have to be insulted for whatever they do, whether they're homosexual or, or anything like that, whether it's homosexual or anything at all. Why can't they just let them do what they want to do and leave them alone as long as they don't harm anybody else? What's wrong with anybody? The reason why, I think, for some of these people is that they, they aren't prepared to, to take the consequences of giving other people equal time to talk about their point of view, and they are censors. They believe in banning the statement of other people's points of view because I think, frankly, they're frightened of the power of that point of view if it's given an open go. And the situation we're in, of course, with the school system and right through, is that they do believe in banning things. They're not prepared to give it an open go. A woman I know had a, a very troubled 16-year-old boy come to her and he said he'd been approached a few times by a homosexual and he, was, he didn't know what to do and he came to her for advice. What advice would you give him? To have a go or what? <laughs> Look, this, I, I really couldn't say because I couldn't make a blanket statement about an individual case without knowing. I mean. Under certain circumstances, I'd say yes. Under others, I'd say no. But I can't say anything about a particular case without knowing about that case in detail. I don't think there's any generalised opinion that one would give. Would you agree that possibly the almost lunatic hate and fear of homosexuality is a handy means of, ex of getting rid of uncertain feelings about one's own sexuality? You know, I may be a little bit odd, but I'm not as odd as him anyway. 
Yeah, um, the danger of that is that um, if I agree with that, then I have to agree that this man down the front here is a latent homosexual, the one that was being so abusive earlier on. And I really don't feel that I want to identify with him in any way whatsoever. <laughs> I'd just like to come back to the discussion before on the rights of a homosexual, a homosexual to adopt children. I'm sure Mr Watson has heard of the nature versus nurture principle of child development. Bearing in mind that modern psychology on child development today would concede that the environment is more important to child development than the hereditary aspect I am extremely interested to hear his views on why a child being reared in such a situation would not have a, this would not have a derogatory influence upon him. Well, I don't know about the derogatory bit. Um, I, said, I said to you before that the evidence is, is totally unhelpful on why people are of various sexual orientations. I also said, it's rehashing old ground, that all homosexuals basically, or 98% of us, are brought up by heterosexuals. They have failed, uh, if you like to put it that way, to, um, to achieve their point of view uh, in their kids. I see no reason why homosexuals should be any more successful. I happen to know of a couple of cases where homosexual couples, male homosexual couples, have in fact brought up kids. Um, not officially, but de facto this has been the case and there are some uh, examples of it in America as well. And they have brought up rampantly heterosexual children. Right. Mr. Watson. Um, just a few points. Uh, at the beginning, you mentioned that it was a perfectly natural thing to be a part of creation, to be a homosexual and so forth. It was, it was a normal thing. Um, I'm, I'm at a little loss to understand this in view of the fact that I do not see uh, two, say, male dogs running together. Or I do not see where two been, males. Where have you been? Have you, do you walk around with your I, eyes closed? I, yes, most most of the time. Um, male dogs may run together. True, that's that's a fact. But they do not perform actions behind closed doors and in bedrooms that uh, you do. Bedrooms. <laughs> right. Uh, the problem, as I see it this afternoon, is the fact that we've been dealing with relatives most of the time instead of with the absolute. Once we deny the absolute, we have then got no relevance at all amongst the relatives. Um, if we deny God, if we deny the absolute, then we can do what we like. We need have no fear of any My relative friends, whatever. you're welcome to your absolute, and I'm welcome to mine, and they don't agree, and I reject your right to enforce yours upon me. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the question is, it seems that all the hostility against homosexuals is directed at the males. Now, what is the reason for this? And why do we not have this same hostility to, when I say hostility, even to the point of assault, against female homosexuals? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you raised the question of lesbians, actually, because we always ignore it, and I've been guilty often enough of ignoring lesbians. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. wasn't intended as a pun. Um, I, I think that the, that the thing with lesbians has got a lot to do with the fact that a lot of people just didn't believe that women were sexual beings in the normal sense anyhow. And they just didn't believe that it was possible or that there was anything they could do. And people just pretended that lesbians simply didn't exist. Now, insofar as people are now realising that that's not the case, uh, I think that there is evidence, there certainly is in Sydney, um, and I think it'd be true in most places, of a quite a, a high degree of aggression against lesbian women um, by men, uh, much more than by women, by men who largely for some reason feel insulted that this woman isn't interested in him sexually. And there, are, there is evidence of attempted rape on lesbian women by men because they, um, they felt in some way threatened by this woman who was sexually independent of them. And unfortunately, it's, it's a trend which is, I think, going to increase to an extent until people get, get over that whole problem. But lesbians are ignored overwhelmingly. I think it's quite true. You have to battle with this uh, aircraft, so yeah. would you? Uh, I think the, um, 
Homos and heteros should be allowed to live their own life as they see fit, uh, providing they don't muck around with anybody else and keep it to themselves. It's only until the uh, Christian fanatical nuts get uh, word out that anything does happen. Yeah, but why don't, why, you know, I agree with that, but why don't people say heterosexuals should be allowed to go about their lives provided they don't muck around with other people too? Because they do. Do homosexuals, uh, in your opinion, have a desire to change from being homosexuals? I believe that through what I see, they do have a desire to change. And who should help them to change, in your opinion? I don't believe that anyone uh, wants to change as a free and voluntary choice, either heterosexual or homosexual. Um, I do know that there is evidence of people wanting to change. Uh, it is almost invariably because they have been brought up in a rigid uh, Christian upbringing which produces either suicidal tendencies and sometimes successful suicide. And there are a large number of documented cases, despite my friend's ironic laughter, of... I am enjoying some of the privileges of a free country, but as a homosexual, I enjoy very few of the privileges which other people in our community have as a right because of the aggressive attitudes of certain Christian elements or allegedly Christian elements. <laughs> Going, just let's finish the other thing. Just finishing the other thing about change, there are a number of people in this country who offer what they call cures. Uh, one of them involves uh, a form of chemical castration one of them involves strapping you into a chair, wiring you up to the electric current, showing you blue movies and giving you electric shocks up to 140 volts. It doesn't work, incidentally, uh, but it's pretty painful. The other one, and there's one psychiatrist at least in Sydney who's prepared to do this, uh, sets about to burn out sections of your brain by drilling holes in it and putting little things in. He says this cures homosexuality. Again, it does not, but he's prepared to do it. Now, these people I regard as, as brutal and dangerous people. I think they ought to be banned. Um, but this is, this is what passes for a cure, and this is the sort of treatment that people who say to homosexuals, why don't you try changing, are encouraging people to do. If we put out that sort of treatment to any other group in the community so that they would conform, we'd regard them as rampant barbarians. But unfortunately, in the case of homosexuals, people seem to think it's reasonable. Right. First of all, Mr. Watson, I'd like to apologise for the behaviour of some of the Mount Isans here today. And secondly, going back to the point of lesbianism, do exactly the same laws of homosexuality apply to them? And if so, how are they discriminated against? What effects does it have? No, um, the, the law doesn't um, specifically provide, uh, pre prescribe lesbian behaviour at all. Um, there are certain penalties and offences where uh, an act involves uh, a woman under the age of, of 16, which is the heterosexual age of consent. But otherwise the law ignores the question. But lesbians, of course, still face a major problem, eh? because they're women in our society anyhow. Uh, and secondly, they face uh, quite sizeable uh, discrimination problems, particularly in the area of jobs. Uh, but also being, by and large, single women, of course, uh, in, in the eyes of the law, if not in fact, uh, they run into all those problems of being a single woman in our society, such as not being able to get a loan for a house, um, such as having no legal recognition for their relationship. Uh, there's a whole series of things like that. You don't have probate rights, so if you, if you happen to be in a couple situation with another woman, uh, you've lived in it for 30 years and one dies, you don't have the right to pass on your house to the other partner in the way in which a heterosexual couple does. There's a series of problems like that, which are quite sizeable. Due to the changes in um, sexual behaviour and heterosexual behaviour, uh, it's a lot more readily accepted these days than it was before. Can in you... homosexual behaviour or heterosexual? Heterosexual. Behavior? Yes. Uh, you know, unmarried uh, families and all this. Can you envisage any lessening in the harassment you've had uh, for homosexuals in the future? Oh, look, uh, the, the homosexual movement in, in Australia has been going for six years, since about mid-1970. Now, a lot has changed in that time. Um, not not as, nearly as much as we would like, 
but if you look at things like opinion polls on public attitudes to changing the homosexual laws, uh, it's gone from one poll in 1967 which said 22% to support to the latest one earlier this year which said 68% support. Now, I think that's a fairly major change. It doesn't extend into the school system, it doesn't extend into a lot of other areas, but things clearly have changed and uh, hopefully will go on doing so. Mr Watson, thank you very much. I'm sorry, we've got to end there. I'm sorry, we do. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on Monday Conference. On behalf of Monday Conference, I must apologise to you for the incident earlier on. It's never happened before. I regret it very much. I do not, I do not have to apologise on behalf of the audience here today. I thought they made it quite clear what they thought of that event, and I thank them very much for doing that in a quite difficult situation. Um, whether, whether, whether or not you agreed with uh, Lex Watson's views, uh, I very much appreciate the way that you made totally clear your disapproval of that loutish behaviour earlier on. I thank you again. Mount Isa has every reason to be proud of you. There'll be another Monday conference next week. Till then, good night. This edition of Monday Conference has come from the outdoor theatre Mount Isa Civic Centre. Our special guest was Lex Watson, gay lib representative on the Homosexual Rights Coalition. The programme was recorded on Tuesday, September the 14th.